Hi friends, welcome back to our chapter book reading time. I hope you're having a good day. Let's read chapter 13. Chapter 13 on page 124, The Case of the Battling Boys. On Saturday afternoon, I was rolling around the living room in my hamster ball when the doorbell rang. Thomas ran to open the door and said, Hi, Joey. It was time for my plan. I started running like crazy in my ball, so it rolled and rolled and rolled away, way under the couch where it was dark and a little dusty. Perfect. Thomas and Joey were talking, but their voices were hard to hear because there was a piece of cloth around the bottom of the couch that reached the floor. Hi, Joey. My dad said he'd drive us to the park. We could shoot some hoops there, Thomas said. No, Joey said. My mom's waiting in the car. My dad would take you back later, Thomas said. He could talk to your mom. I thought I heard Joey say no again. Then he asked, where's Humphrey? Thomas said something I couldn't understand, and then Joey said, well, he must be around here somewhere. They said something about searching for me, then all I heard were footsteps clomping all over the room. I used to have hamster named Giggles, Joey said. He loved his hamster ball. Humphrey, Humphrey reminds me of him. Then Thomas said, I used to have a pet ostrich, and he giggled too. No way, Joey said. I did, Thomas insisted. His name was Ozzy. Joey sighed. Oh, let's just find Humphrey. The boys were quiet again, except for their footsteps. He must be under something, Joey said. More footsteps. Then Thomas said, not under the chair. Even more footsteps. Then Joey said, what about the couch? Before I knew it, hand lifted up the cloth. Thomas and Joey were staring right at me. Humphrey, Thomas said, what are you doing there? I didn't dare squeak the truth, so I stayed silent. Joey reached way, way back and grabbed the hamster ball. Where's his cage? In my room, Thomas said. Joey carried me to Thomas's room and put me back in my cage. Okay, Humphrey, we're ready to go, he told me. Wait, Thomas said. Don't you want to come shoot some hoops with me and my dad? He used to be in the NBA. NBA? Look, I just don't want to, okay? Joey said. I was surprised to hear Joey talk like that. Just Joey usually got along with everyone. What's wrong with you? Thomas asked. Why are you always telling lies? Joey asked. Your dad wasn't in the NBA, and he's not a detective or an airline pilot or any of that stuff, right? Thomas hesitated. No, he admitted, but he's in the transportation business. He sells cars. You don't have to make all that stuff up. You're lucky to have a dad around. Not everybody does, Joey said. My dad lives far away, and I don't get to see him very much, but I don't lie about him. Sorry, Thomas said. He sounded sorry. I was sorry that Joey didn't get to see his dad much, too. But Joey wasn't finished with Thomas. What about the lost and found? Thomas rolled his eyes. It was kind of creepy in there, but maybe the severed hands was just a glove. And the ostrich, Joey asked. Thomas laughed. I did have an ostrich named Ozzy, but it was a toy when I was little. Joey grinned. I believe that. And the shark teeth? That's true, Thomas said. I'll show you. He opened a drawer and handed a box to Joey. Here they are. Joey's eyes got really big when he looked inside the box. Wow, these really are shark teeth. My uncle gave them to me, Thomas said. He's in the Navy, and that's true. I scrambled to get a peek at the shark teeth. Yeek, they looked unsqueakably sharp. Joey stared at the teeth. Do you know what kind they are? Thomas shook his head. The library has a book on sharks. We could go look them up, Joey said. Together? Tommy or Thomas asked. Just Joey grinned. Yeah, if you don't make any stuff up. Thomas nodded and said, I just to like, like to make things up to sound more interesting. You don't need to, Joey answered. Thomas seemed surprised. I don't. Just be you. Just Thomas, Joey said. Thomas thought for a second. Okay. So do you want to shoot hoops before we go to the library, he asked. Joey did, which made me feel great, great, great. He went out and talked to his mom, then Mr. True took Joey and Thomas away for a long time. When they came back, they had a new idea. Joey would spend the night at Thomas's, and they would look after me together. That meant I wasn't going to Joey's house after all. I wasn't all that disappointed since he had a dog, 
Oh my goodness, I just skipped all those pages. Since he had a dog named Skipper who caught Frisbees in his teeth. I'd seen the tooth marks, so I'm pretty sure he wasn't exaggerating. I'd rather be around shark's teeth with no shark attached than a dog with teeth still in his mouth. On a Sunday, I was thrilled when Thomas and Joey studied for the big math test together. Before class started on Monday, Joey told his friends about Thomas's amazing shark tooth collection. You mean it was true, Simon asked. Yes, Joey said, it really was. Then Thomas said, I guess I exaggerate about some other things. Sorry about that. I just like a good story. Me too, do it now, Daniel said, especially Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? We've got to do well in our test so we can hear the end of that story, Tall Paul said. I studied, Harry said. Me too, Simon said. Yep, I did too, Small Paul said. That was good news. After attendance, Mr. E got right to work and the math test began. I watched my friends thinking, writing, erasing, writing some more. After the test was over, my friends begged Mr. E to grade them right away. So while they were at recess, he sat at Mrs. Risbane's desk and marked each one. When he was finished, he smiled. Good, he said, very good. Did you hear that og I squeaked? I looked over just as my friend did a magnificent dive into his water. I guess he had heard. When my classmates came back after recess, all eyes were on Mr. E. Well, class, I'm sorry to tell you, Mr. E paused. My friends looked very, very, very nervous. Then I'm going to have to read you the rest of the red-headed league. Everybody cheered, including me. Naturally, or you all did very well on the test, he said. Naturally, with all that cheering, the door opened, and there was Mrs. Wright. I could hear your class all the way down the hall, she said. Still smiling, Mr. E walked toward her. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wright. We were celebrating the great job my students did on their math test. Mrs. Wright looked surprised. Oh, well, that's good news. We'll cheer a little more quietly next time, Mr. E said. Thank you, Mr. Andinopoulos, Mrs. Wright replied. She actually smiled. Humans can be very pie-whacking. After she left, Mr. E said Mrs. Brisbane would be very pleased with you. Mrs. Brisbane would be very pleased with us. That was nice to hear. But I wasn't very pleased with Mrs. Brisbane. How could she start reading an exciting story and then run off to go to ballet school without even finishing it? Really, it was a mystery to me. And then I remembered what she'd said in her, in her letters to think it was all because of Humphrey. What had I done? What had I said? Maybe Sherlock's Holmes... Maybe Sherlock Holmes, the great detective, would help me understand. Mr. E pulled a tall stool from the corner and moved it to the front of the classroom. He took off his sweater and everyone laughed. On the back, he had on a black t-shirt that had Mr. E in red wavy letters and a cartoon of a man with bright red hair that looked a lot like him. He sat on the stool and in a mysterious voice said, A mystery read by Mr. E. He opened the big red book and said, and now the exciting conclusion of the adventure of the Red-Headed League, he began to read. He was an excellent story reader, every bit as good as Mrs. Brisbane. It turns out that Mr. Jabez Wilson went to his strange job every, each evening and was paid well. Then one day he came to work, the office was locked, and a sign read, the Red-Headed League is dissolved. That's when he visited Sherlock Holmes, which was an unsqueakably good idea. I don't want to give away the whole story, but Sherlock Holmes solved the puzzle and caught the bad guys in the act. And what a surprise, the Red-Headed League turned out to be a trick. Sherlock Holmes showed me that a detective can't always assume things that are what they seem to be. Could I have been wrong about what happened to Mrs. Brisbane? I hope that one day I'll find out. What did you think, Mr. E asked? Did any of you figure it out? Thomas T. True's hands shot up in the air. I did. Really? Mr. E asked. When? I saw just Joey turn to watch Thomas. I think he was pretty sure Thomas was going to exaggerate. Maybe Thomas noticed Joey's look too. This is the last page of chapter 13. Thomas grinned. 
When you read us the ending, everybody laughed and Joey high-fived Thomas. After he was finished with the story, Mr. E gave us a lesson on Egypt, a lesson on writing sentences in a new math problem. He even showed us different kinds of clouds with cool pictures on a projector. We were busy, busy, busy. Near the end of the day, Mr. Morales stopped by room 26. He was wearing a tie with little gold stars all over it. I don't want to interrupt your studies, he said. I just want to say that I heard this class did a tremendous job on the math test today. Mr. E nodded. They really did. Are you proud of yourselves? My classmates cheered and clapped. I hopped up and down and I squeaked, yes, yes, yes. Congratulations, Mr. E and class. Keep up the good work, the principal said. I was unsqueakably proud of Mr. E. It looked as if he was turning into a good teacher and my friends still liked him. I guess I liked him too. Humphrey's Detectionary. Sometimes a detective learns something surprising about himself. He might even learn that someone he didn't like is really a good human after all. All right, my friends, that was our last chapter for this week because we're going to have Thanksgiving break. But when we come back to Class Dojo on Monday, we're going to read the last chapter of Book 8. Do you think we're going to finally find out what happens to Mrs. Brisbane? Hmm, I don't know. All right, my friends, I hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving. Have a great long weekend. I love you guys. Bye.